Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Emerson and today we're going to be talking about enamel pins. We're going to be going step by step through the whole process of making an enamel pin and I'm going to be using this one as an example. I made this in collaboration with the company GSJJ. They reached out to me to make some custom enamel pins together in exchange for a YouTube video, but all of the opinions and everything will of course be my own. Big thank you to them for working with me on these. They are an enamel pin manufacturer and they also make a variety of other products, so it's definitely worth checking out their website. So when you're making an enamel pin, the first thing of course is to come up with your design. You want to make sure you have something that has clear divisions for where the colors will be filled in. There are effects like screen printing that can be used, but I don't personally have experience with those and they do add on cost. Another thing you might want to keep in mind is the size of different areas of your pin. If you have too many teeny tiny ones, it can make it a lot more likely that you'll get more B grades, which will have small imperfections just because it's a little bit harder to get the enamel into those areas. Once you've decided on your artwork, you want to digitize it and make sure that it has really clean, sharp lines. And you're going to want to turn it into a little graphic like this. You'll see it contains the artwork, the placement of posts on the back, and the Pantone colors that you want to use. For enamel pins, you use what are called Pantone solid coated colors. And this is how the manufacturer is going to know what color to mix up for you, like precisely. You can purchase a book with Pantone samples, but it's pretty expensive, so if you're just starting out, you might want to just find something online and kind of guess the best that you can. I'll leave a link down below for what I use. And a little tip is that after you're finished with your artwork, you might want to go in and kind of turn up the saturation a little, turn down the saturation a little, and make sure that you'd be okay with your colors if they're tweaked a little bit just so that you have like a margin of error that you're kind of okay with. So once you have all of that, you want to pick out a manufacturer. You have a ton of options here, and like I said, for these ones I use the company gsjj.com, and I was really happy with my experience with them. You can also find a variety of manufacturers on the website Alibaba, or you can go on Google and kind of look around. Most companies should have options listed for the type of metal that they have, so you're going to want to go through and pick one of those. I usually use gold, and I think that is probably the most common color. You should also put some thought into the type of backing you want. I like to use rubber clutch backings because they make it softer on the inside for the wearer, and they can also come in some fun colors, so I usually go with those. A nice thing about the company that I mentioned is that they have a list on their website of all of their options for these types of things and they even have a list of their most common Pantone colors. Um, I'll leave a link to that down below. You'll also want to decide on the size of it, of course. For me, I like to take a ruler next to like my iPad and make it the actual size that I'm thinking of so I can see what it would be like. You might also want to print out a little picture and then you can like see the actual size in your hand and that might be helpful. So once you've made your graphic, picked your manufacturer, and decided on all of the details, you are ready to make it. You'll want to start with inquiring with your manufacturer about how much everything will cost and all of the information that they'll need from you. They should have all of the questions ready for you and it should be pretty easy to talk with them. They'll have to take some time to make their own version of your outline and then they should send it to you for your approval and they'll kind of make their own version of your little graphic that has all of the details just to confirm with you. If there's any adjustments you need, then make sure to ask for them. Also, if you want to receive photos of your pin before they make all of them, you can request that. If you'd like to receive a physical proof in the mail, you can also request that, but that will add on additional cost, mostly because of the shipping price. And once all of that is sent away, you've pretty much done the entire hard part and you just have to wait for them in the mail. Once you receive them, you might want to sort them into A grade and B grade. For this particular pin, um, I only got two B grade and I got 25 total, so that was really nice. You might also want to think about your own packaging for them, how you're going to photograph them, where you're going to sell them, all of that stuff, but that will be different for everyone. The pins I showed today will be available in my shop very, very soon if they aren't already, and if they are, then I'll leave a link below so you can check those out if you're interested. I hope this video 
video was able to be informative and helpful if you're looking to make enamel pins of your own. It's a super exciting process and it's a lot of fun seeing them get made. So if you are going on that journey, I hope that you enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them, but I'm not exactly an expert yet. And that's all I have for today, so thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!